Once upon a time, Norman Osborne's cabal had a meeting. While the members waited for Norman to arrive, the Hood had a question for Doctor Doom. He read in a forbidden text that Doom once traveled to the depths of hell to defeat a demon and rescue Victor's mom. The Hood is honestly curious if the story is true and wonders that if Doom could beat a demon, what does that make him? This talk annoys Victor to no end and is not pleased that this fool dare speak of his mother. The other members of the Cabal were shocked, assuming that Victor just killed the man, but he just banished the Hood to India. He'd be back. In the present, a villain has captured Maria Hill and plans to torture her for information. But he is approached by Victor Von Doom, who is not impressed by this buffoon's amateur antics. Doom makes short work of the interloper and frees Maria. He promises that he will tell nobody of this, as he wouldn't want to tarnish the reputation of S.H.I.E.L.D. And with that, he disappears. Maria only has one response to all of this. What the f***? At Cambridge University, Victor approaches Dr. Amara Pereira, former love interest of Tony Stark. She asks if it is true, and Doom confirms it. Stark was killed live on television. He's sorry about this, and knows she has conflicting feelings about the man. In response, Amara coldly asks why Doom has come here. He answers that he's checking in on her research, claiming to be concerned for her. Victor apologizes, saying he doesn't have the best reputation in the world. He understands that, but he's trying to make amends. He thinks Amara is right. If he wants to truly make up for all the terrible things he's done, he's going to have to approach it with the same zeal as when he was a villain. Amara begins to panic and asks what Doom wants. He only says that she reminds him of someone, and then fades away. Amara is still coming to grips with all of this when she is approached by a figure. His name is Ben Grimm. He's looking for Doctor Doom, and Intel says she knows him. Elsewhere, Doom enters Iron Man's lab. As he looks over the tech, a hologram of Tony appears and demands that Victor leave. Doom is impressed, commenting that Tony must have been able to download his mind into a functional AI in case his body failed him. The AI asks what Victor is doing here. There's nothing that Tony built that Doom couldn't make himself. Doom only replies that he knows what must be done. He will take the mantle of Iron Man, despite the AI's protests. Victor's not asking, he's just doing what needs to be done. As the new Iron Man flies away, he is watched by two people. They are not sure what to make of this new behavior, and one thinks that Victor might be becoming the man they had always hoped he would. Perhaps Doom has finally found his calling. Victor's mother ponders this in silence. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Infinite Iron Man number one. All right, here we go again. Once more, a particular issue floats my way that makes me feel obliged to make a certain review because the implications are of note. This time mostly because apparently we're just gonna go ahead and spoil a major event we have yet to see in Civil War 2. <laughs> That aspect of the story is on the whole quite disappointing. No matter what you make of this news, without a doubt things would have been better if they had waited until after Civil War II had revealed this before Marvel published this particular comic. It's just such an oversight that it's baffling and kinda has me bummed out. What was I to do? Ignore the news and just go on until it happened in Civil War II and then mention that I had known about this for weeks? I, no, there was no way around it, we had to talk about this. What's worse is that the reveal has me very worried that all the build-up and deaths of Civil War II seems to be heading towards another death. If that's true, well, I guess it's not that much different than the first Civil War, but that kind of is annoying. The reason I was so excited about Civil War II was that it was another chance for Marvel to tackle this story and do it a little better, maybe. We don't know for sure whether or not they're going to. There may be more twists and turns along the way. Perhaps everyone just thinks Tony is dead or something, though either way it's all a bit silly, mostly because this has been done before. 
And all we can hope for is that Civil War 2 will have some other, more sustained implications for the Marvel community. Mostly because it feels like it should. Like it's a Civil War. It's supposed to be a big deal. So I get why big names have to die to give it these stakes, but killing off the rebellious popular leader at the end of your story? Well, that's exactly what they did the first time around, and it's therefore the most boring possible outcome. <sighs> okay, right, we're talking about an Iron Man comic here? Or, no, I guess we have two Iron Men. You know, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I'm honestly just getting really lost and have to go by bleeding cool posts to keep track of what's happening in Marvel these days. It's rapidly becoming too complicated even for me. And I'm usually pretty good at remembering and understanding the vast, complicated continuities that riddle the comic book world. This is getting to be a real problem for Marvel, and compared to the much simpler, polished, and planned content by DC coming out in the last few months, well, the sales kind of speak for themselves. I guess the idea is that Riri, a character randomly introduced a short, recent story arc ago, is kind of the official successor to Iron Man, while Doom is just sort of doing whatever he wants. As he should. I can't even imagine what discussion led to this decision. Alright, so everyone's making fun of us for turning characters evil or pulling half-assed diversity stunts, but this time, we'll do both! That'll show them! And somehow that great idea came to be. At least with Doom, it's not only interesting, but he's heading in a natural direction considering what we've seen of this character in Hickman's Fantastic Four, Time Runs Out, Secret Wars, and the more recent Invincible Iron Man stuff. Doom's come a long way and been through a preposterous amount of stuff in that time, so him becoming a changed man feels very much right at this point, exactly where his character's been heading for quite a while now. I like the idea of him being this sort of rogue anti-hero that genuinely wants to make up for his past mistakes. All of that works, and the best part of this comic is the flashbacks to Doom's past and his actions in the present informing this change in character. Doom is badass, without a doubt one of the best villains in fiction, period. And in spite of having existed for so long, Marvel's done a pretty good job of keeping this character dignified and powerful, we'll say like 90% of the time. So why does this comic feel kind of flat to me? Given how long this has been built up, given how cool Doom is a character, and given how potentially great this idea is, this should be a big, cool moment. But I finished this comic feeling kind of bummed out more than energetic or excited. And that's very frustrating. Doctor Doom getting his own series and becoming the new Iron Man? This should be epic. This should be a huge deal. I should be drooling all over this thing. And I don't feel that way. And that fact is a little bit soul-crushing. I believe the problem lies in a few issues. First of all, the story was played out all wrong. I've talked about that a bit already, but the way it's published relative to Civil War II really clouds the judgment of everything here. Without this sufficient build-up to this story, as a reader, I'm wondering more about what happened to Tony rather than focusing on Doom doing something new and exciting. That's devastating to any evaluation of this story. This isn't a particularly strong Bendis issue either. I really think a Marvel writer who didn't have a million other things to worry about right now would probably have put more effort and polish into this script. A lot of dialogue doesn't feel right and isn't very true to the characters. This is evident in Doom, but most apparent in Ben Grimm, whose cameo should have been exciting, but instead just feels a little off. And this is Byron Michael Bendis we're talking about here, who usually makes character work and dialogue look effortless, even in his shoddier works. As a result, a lot of this story kind of feels off. The conversation between Amara and Doom feels like it's kind of missing a couple of lines and moments of development so that it comes across a bit clunky and disjointed. Doom's rescue of Maria Hill isn't done well either, and again, the dialogue doesn't help much with that. Although I will say Maria's reaction to it was pitch perfect. That was great. <laughs> credit where credit is due. <laughs> Even the Tony AI didn't leave as much impact as they thought it should have. However, Perhaps the worst thing of all is I don't really care for the design of Doom's Iron Man armor. Yeah, it feels really boring when a Doctor Doom themed Iron Man suit should look way more interesting than this. This feels generic. If I didn't know this was Doom, I'd probably just assume this was a less cool looking version of Tony's stealth gear. Hopefully it might look better with say a Doctor Doom cloak wrapped around it or something. I could kind of see that. But even then, I don't, I don't know. This doesn't otherwise feel all that meaningfully different from any other Iron Man armor we've seen. But shouldn't it be? 
For the record, I do like Alex Maleev, the artist behind all of this. He's done some pretty strong comics before, but here his work kind of feels pretty lacking throughout, with one really notable exception in the initial meeting with the Cabal. By the way, that part at the beginning was by far the best written and most compelling part of the comic. It's a solid reminder of why a comic featuring Doom can and would work well. That and the little twist at the end are part of the reasons why I still think this series has promise. Part of it might be the horrible timing of everything. Marvel kind of lost all sense of traction when it came to these changes a long time ago. As I've grumbled about a bit already in this video, it really can't be understated how constantly changing identities, temporarily turning characters evil or replacing them with the minds of villains or whatever weird crap is going on, and the never-ending shifting of rosters of the various teams that dominate the Marvel Universe, it's all becoming an incomprehensible stew. There's so much glut, nothing feels like an ongoing, stable world anymore. As a result, a comic like this that should be earth-shattering and a really big deal really doesn't have much of an impact when you get right down to it. It's not just that we know intellectually none of this is permanent. That's pretty much true for all comics. It's that it doesn't even feel that significant anymore. The comic lacks any emotional weight, and it certainly doesn't have any rational weight, and deprived of both, the story suffers. I admit, part of my reaction seems to be based on stuff not necessarily the fault of the comic itself, but when and how it was published and because of greater problems within this particular company. But I can only go by the reality of the situation. This comic, like everything else, is not published in a vacuum. The external world matters and is relevant. However, looking over it, even taking aside all the nonsense of Marvel right now, which I think is completely unfair, but even giving them all the benefit of the doubt in the world, this comic's not that great. <laughs> Neither the art nor the writing really deliver on a comic that, yeah, should be great to sell this new idea. But as it stands, no, I say no. There's better stories elsewhere this week. Kind of on the other side of the company line, but see my last two reviews for the examples. So that's a shame. I really want this story to work. It could be fun, and man, it's Doctor Doom. I really want this story to work. I hope things improve. I want to love this series. I am ready for Doom. But right now, I don't think it's living up to that, and that's a shame. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.